Hi, Mark here from Lydian Stream. Today I want to try and clear up the mess about intervals. So many people get confused and there's a very simple reason why we get confused and that's what I want to introduce you to today. We're going to present it in two videos. The first one, why we're confused and hopefully in the second one, deconfusing the confusion. So hang in there, only good stuff, let's go. Confusion. 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 It's very simple why there is so much confusion when it comes to understanding intervals and that leads to a lot of confusion later on with chords and melodies and harmony and all sorts of stuff. Here's a bit of gossip basically. It goes back four or five hundred years to a time when music was much more rigid than we think of it today. Music was formed on a system given to us by the Greeks a couple of thousand years ago and broken down into a series of 12 notes. One note following the next and they are our building blocks in Western music. All the music we make is based in those 12 notes which are our building blocks. There are 12 notes and there's a half step or a semitone between each note. That's all you need to remember for now. Once you get past the 12th note you come to number 13. This is the first note again, what we call an octave, which is a strange word because octave means eight. And how can we have the number eight when we have 12 notes and 13 becomes eight? Yes, and I'm being confusing on purpose because it's really crazy. What happened was really simple. We messed around, the Greeks used to mess around with all the different combinations and possibilities with these notes and came up with all sorts of different ways of jumping between notes, and they used to call those scales. We've all heard of scales. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do, a scale. Each different kind of jumping, they gave a different name to. One of them became so popular that in the West, we adopted only that scale for many reasons, which we'll go into in the future. And they became, this scale became the basic scale of all our Western music up until a few hundred years ago the time of Bach, that's when it started to change. And that scale was called the major scale, or if you really want to sound cool, you can call it the Ionian scale, because that's what the Greeks called it. What happens is that if you have an equal distance between all the notes, wherever you start your scale, you will always end up in the same place, having played a relationship that is always going to be the major scale. What happens is, that if you have an equal distance between all the notes, wherever you start your scale, you will always end up in the same place, having played a relationship that is always going to be the major scale. So let's try and make order out of this madness. Again, we have 12 notes that we use that are building blocks. We call the distance between the notes closest to each other a half step or a semitone. The major scale that we've been talking about is a series of jumps from one note to the next, going either a semitone half step or a whole tone, which is two halves together. So the major scale looks like this. We go a tone, we go another tone, we go a semitone, then we go another tone, then we go another tone, one more tone, and a semitone takes us back home to the beginning, either above this note by what we call an octave, because it vibrates the note twice as fast, or below by what we call an octave, because it's vibrating half as fast the note, but exactly half as fast. Now this is here where the fun gets, or where it gets really complicated, I suppose. So here's note number one, here's the second note in our scale is now the third note of all our notes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight is back home. Eight in Latin is octave, well, octavia or something like that, but octave like octopus. And as a result of this, until this day, we call note number 13, eight. Let's look at it like this. Let's not look at it as a beginning and the end. Let's just look at it as a circle or a spiral, if you like. Here's a note, here's a second note, 
Here's a third note. Here's a third note. Here's a third note. Here's a third note. Twelve. And this is one or thirteen. But actually, I could spin this wheel and any of these could be one or thirteen. No note is more important than any other. They are just sounds in the universe that we hear. We gave them names and we organized them into a system. We'd go whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and half step takes us home. This formula is so popular, it became the most popular formula we used in Western music. We call it the major scale, which I'm sure we've all heard of, and it became the only scale we used to create music for many hundreds of years. The names we gave to these notes here, the notes we're playing in the scale, they're the only ones that got a name. And we called them, well, they were called, I didn't call them anything. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do. Or, if you want, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Seven names, 12 notes, but they are equal the notes. They have no value. One note is not more important than the next. And I could have called any one of those 12 notes Do or C. It's not rigid. So, the notes in between, what happened to them? How we understand that the notes that didn't get names are just as important as those notes that have names. And that's a strange sentence, but that will clarify itself as we move forward. So check out the next video. There I hope that I will clarify the confusion I have just caused. All I need you to take with you to the next video is seven names, 12 notes, the 13th note, which is one we call the octave, octopus if you like, which means eight. Very weird. I'll sort it out for you, but take that with you. Only good stuff and let the music lead.